So when do bonds form? Let's just uh, refresh our minds with that from yesterday. When atoms do what? Raise your hand if you could tell me. Good. Combined by sharing electrons, okay? Sometimes they don't share. When Sometimes they transfer. When they transfer, does anybody know what type of bond that's called? Ionic. Transfer of electrons. I say an, an atom steals an electron from another or the atom just gives it. Why? Because it's trying to fill its outer shell. And we're going to talk about that. The shells have to be balanced. And when they're not, electrons are, are being sucked away from other atoms or they're giving them to other atoms. That bond is not the, the strongest of bonds, okay? Because when you take something from someone, it's not... Like it's not like you did it generously, right? So the bond is, is more of a weak bond. Not the weakest, but it's weak. When atoms share electron, the bond is actually stronger. What kind of bond is that? Co. Think of the word co. They're together. They're sharing and they're both happy. Now sometimes the sharing is not is not balanced. One atom is kind of pulling. And the other one is, is tugging. So anybody know what that's called? It's a type of covalent bond because they're sharing, but it's a it's a covalent bond with a charge on one end, a pull on one end. Polar. Good. Polar covalent bonds. And then the weakest of all the covalent bonds occurs when hydrogens share electrons. So it's a polar covalent bond between hydrogens. Anybody know what it's called? has its own name between hydrogens hydrogen bonds oh, no. <laughs> hydrogen bonds are polar covalent bonds notice what I did with the notes you've got covalent bonds and then I indented polar covalent bonds because it's bonds between atoms that share, they're just different, they're unique. And hydrogen bonds are indented because they are polar covalent bonds between two hydrogens. So it's the one unique bond. All right, I have some animations. I guess I'll go to them. Except ionic, yeah. So it's polar and hydrogen. Look what's happening there. Who could tell me? Well, obviously the title's there. Do you see what's happening? Tell me what's happening. Can you see it? Because it's kind of small. Let me see. Oh, look at that. What's happening? Uh, no, I kind of went from CL, which is four hydrogen. You see that? You see an, e an electron leaving CL and going to sodium? Um, basically, chlorine is taking away from sodium. Yeah, sodium is giving chlorine an electron. Okay, so what ends up happening to sodium? <coughs> if it gives an electron, what happens to sodium? It becomes positively charged. Good, and a positively charged atom is called what? It's already in your notes. Positively charged particle. And that's a test question right there. Positively charged particle is proton. Positively charged atom, an ion. Ionic bonds. When you lose an electron, you become positively charged. When you gain an electron, you become negatively charged. Let's see how I can go back now. Thus forming a covalent bond. Electrons will spend a portion. Based on what you just saw, what kind of covalent bond is that? Raise your hand. You could tell me everything about it. It's a hydrogen covalent It's a hydrogen covalent bond. Polar. It's polar. Why? Because um, um, each electron, uh, the one, the electron, or not the electron, but like the hydrogen atom on the left is pulling and the hydrogen atom on the Good. right. Good. They're sharing their electrons unevenly. I think that's the only example here. All right. I think that's good for examples. All 
right, so here's a picture. I guess I could have somebody come up and label it right from here. Come on. You're basically going to use this pen right here and write in. Or I could bring you the, the iPad. You used to come up to my board back in the day. Is this your Yep. That's a, a label. Oh. I can zoom in. Why? You just write on it. Oh, you're going to write there? Okay. That's good. We know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Roll time. Next. Do you have this in your diagram? Yeah? Next. It's okay. You said you spelled it wrong. Oh. Oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, you did. New time. Next. Hard, huh? Next, top line. Did you already come up? Yes. Somebody else. Come up. It's easier on the board. Except when you stand there, you're kind of shadowed, so people have trouble with that too. Good. All right, now I know we haven't covered this, but I know you guys are smart and have past experience. So this atom, its first shell of electrons, is it content? Why? Because it has two, and the first shell only has two. So you could write that. First shell. Two electrons. How did I get the pencil back? Then, what about the second shell? And this is what I'm referencing to the first shell, guys. So this is my second shell. Raise your hand if you could tell me. I only have two people participating today. Yes. Um, the outer shell is your Why? Because the outer shell can hold eight. Good. The outer shell should hold eight electrons. Or, or in that case, the second shell. Because there could be a third shell, correct? All right, so what's going to happen? Give me some scenarios. Raise your hand if you could tell me that. What can happen? How many? It's going to try to... Share two electrons with another atom, or if it does, what's that called? Covalent. Okay. Or it can. Or it can try um, taking electrons from an atom so it can get closer to eight. It could try taking how many electrons from another atom? Two. Two, and then it would form what kind of bond? Raise your hand if you can tell me that. Ionic. Ionic. Good. And I think I have pictures there of me. I would. All right. So we're gonna learn about compounds of life. The first we're gonna learn actually four. The first compound we're gonna talk about is an inorganic compound. It's the compound of life because we need it. It's one of the most important compounds. But it's inorganic. Anybody know why it's called inorganic? It doesn't have carbon. It doesn't have how many carbons? For something to be organic, you have to have what? No. Two. As long as you have two carbons in your chemical composition, you are an organic compound, okay? All right, so water obviously doesn't because water is made up of what? Who could tell me? Two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. Good. Two hydrogens and an oxygen. H2O. So when the number is after the element, that means it's two of that element. When the number is before, it means two of the whole molecule, which water is always in, in bunches. 
How much of Earth is water? Who could tell me? 70, approximately 70, 75. How about how much of you? Like the same. I mean, you're constantly losing water and gaining water, but have you ever thought that the balance of your body matches the balance of your environment in water? Because all the time your body is trying to seek some kind of balance with its external environment, and that's one of them. 70% of Earth is water, 70% of you is water. Water is a polar covalent bond. Why? Who could tell me? Um, they're sharing their atoms, but they're not sharing equally. Good. They're sharing their what? Oh, electrons. Electrons. They're forming bonds between the atoms, but they're sharing electrons unevenly. Okay? Where is the sharing of electrons? Between what and what? Who could tell me? Look at the picture. The oxygen atom, um, there's, uh, there's the two hydrogen atoms, one on the bottom left and one on the bottom right, and the two electrons that are connecting with it, that's where the bond is. The, the, the two electrons that are connecting with each one. Who's like sharing? The, the, um, all right. The oxygen atom is sharing a bond with the, with the hydrogen atom on the Perfect. bottom right because it's sharing there. It and you it's said. also sharing on the bottom left. Correct. Oxygen is sharing with hydrogen on each end. And if you notice, if the hydrogen is positive, what does that mean? The oxygen is negative. The oxygen is negative. That's where you see the pool. Even though they're sharing, and sharing means you're not supposed to be charged, there's still a charge because they're sharing unevenly. Why? Because if hydrogen is going to give oxygen an electron, what is it staying with? <coughs> Nothing. So it's constantly pulling back and forth. Does that make sense? Because hydrogen is one. So it needs another to be balanced, but in reality, it's kind of giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. So it's, it's not a perfect share. There's a pull constantly. Now, besides the sharing of electrons, between the hydrogens, there's a force. It's a strong force between the hydrogen bonds, or between the hydrogens, let's say. We know there's kind of like a bond here for me. This allows water to have unique properties. That force between the hydrogens. It's like a magnet, and it gives water all these unique properties. Let's see who can remember what water's unique properties are. Oh, yeah. That's not unique, though. Don't other things? What I mean is, like, only water does this. Okay, yes. Which causes it to do, well, let's just say the fact you said solid and liquid yeah. and gas. It's actually the only substance on Earth that exists in three states, right? And without that, we wouldn't be able to live on this planet. Liquid water is the reason why we live on, on this planet. What else? The pH of water is 7. Awesome. Norin acid, that base norin acid. It's the only substance with a neutral pH. Everything else is going to release hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions when mixed with water. <coughs> water is neutral. What else? Well, I just gave you this one. It's always going to break up into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. And there should be, what signs next to the H? The H of one. No, plus, and the OH? Negative, okay? Like we saw in the previous picture. Look at my little arrow up and my arrow down. What do you think I'm talking about there? That makes water unique. Good. What about it? 32 degrees freezing and 100 degrees. Well, if we're going to use 100, then we're going to use zero. 100, so it's the extremes of the temperature scale. Has a max boiling point and the lowest freezing point. Even though you could be below zero, obviously, but. What does water do to most things? Cools them down. Cools them down, yeah. Can eat them up though too. 